Glory be to God. It's okay to take your Bibles and be seated. Amen. We thank God for this season of fasting. Thank you, beloved. You can have your seat. We thank God for this season of fasting. Amen. Thank God for how the Holy Ghost is leading us. And he is bringing us understanding. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in the coming days is whether you are at home or we are gathering together is going to be a season of intense intercession and warfare. Amen. I said, I think one of the things that you ought to pray this year is anything that is going to close your mouth in church. You have to face that thing. Because there must be a place to say amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There must be a place for you to say amen. Before you become a casualty. Before you become a casualty. Amen. Therefore, that means you are attentive. You are alert. You don't allow your mind to wander. You don't allow your mind to try and interpret. Be here. Hold. Spirit, soul, and body. Praise God. Praise God. We are going to be taking on this scripture. Second Corinthians 10, verse 3 to verse 6 in the New King James. And then you will understand the direction we'll be going in these few days. For though we walk in the flesh. Amen. Walk as in W-A-L-K. In other words, we have a physical leg that is moving. But we do not war according to the flesh. Amen. We do not war according to the flesh. So what this scripture is saying is, like it or not, you are in warfare. Amen. Like it or not, you are in warfare. This is a warfare that you got, is it inscripted? How do they say it? Conscripted into the day you gave your life to Jesus. Amen. You have a an enemy that hates you with everything. Listen. The volume of hatred that Satan has against the church. And this is not just about you sitting down here or Latter House Christian Center. I'm talking about the church in general. No human being can explain it. I hope you know that there is even nobody on the face of the earth or demons that Satan loves. In him, there is no capacity to love. Regardless of how yielded you are to him. He does not love you. So, if there is anything you know that he's the one making you do, then we should ask you a question. We should not ask him because he has made it very clear. He's been preached everywhere that Satan hates you. So, why are you working for him? But how about if you are working for him and you don't know you are working for him? Amen. Amen. So God is going to open our eyes when we come every Tuesday, when we come every Friday, when we come every Sunday. That is for those who are serious with God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Those who are not hinging on another person's spirituality to be spiritual. Those who are not waiting for somebody to encounter God and come and give them the crumbs. Those who by themselves know that, listen, this Christianity thing, as much as I love you, you are my sister, you are my friend, you are my brother. Something will come between us the day you change your mind about the God that I live and serve. Okay. 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 We walk in the flesh. And we have a warfare. Ongoing. But it is not according to the flesh. Keep going. It says, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Praise God. 
So, if I understand this scripture well, and I know that the Holy Spirit has given me interpretation, the Holy Spirit, the day you gave your life to Jesus, knows that you are at war. So this same God, who knows that you have an enemy he has died to save you from, and still knows that there is warfare, gave you weapons. Now, a weapon is useless in the hand of the person who does not know how to use it. Have you seen children taking knife and trying to put it in their mouth? How many people have seen that? Thank you. Have you seen children light matches and try to touch it with their hand? Why are they doing that? They, are, they know that when they strike the box with a stick, fire will come out. But they have not been burnt. So they think that it is light. Like the one you have electricity. Have you seen children when an electrician comes to your house and has finished working? And there are some wires hanging they want to go and touch. What is that? Childishness. Another word for it is what? Ignorance. They don't know. So if you... <laughs> I have... I have watched a lot of crime TV to hear how children went into the rooms of their parents, mostly abroad. They saw a gun, they took it. They know it's a gun. They've seen it in movies that it kills. But they held it that time, they are playing with it. And bam, they shot, killed their father, one killed his mother, one killed his sister. So you may even know that something is a weapon, but when you don't know how to use it, it will cause damage instead of increase. Am I preaching to anybody? So we do have weapons. We do have weapons. There are many believers who don't even know that we have weapons. There are many believers who don't even know what those things are. Even though they see them, they don't know how devastating that thing can be. Hallelujah. So God, by his spirit, will be bringing us understanding. The core essence of what I'll be teaching, and I know that your resident pastor will also be bringing the word, is to highlight these weapons for you. When you are highlighted these weapons, you will also be shown how to use these weapons. Glory be to God. So that you don't waste your time, lose the war, or get permanent damage. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I hope you know that every weapon that is in the hand of a user, that same weapon can destroy the user. If the user doesn't know how to use the weapon, praise God. It says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God. What do they do? They pull down strongholds. And then what? Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I want you to underline this sentence if you can do that in your Bible. Things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Which means there are things. They can be beings. They can be produced by beings. But they want to exalt themselves. They want to position themselves higher than the knowledge you have in God. Amen? You know that God is a healer. But there are diseases that want to come and tell you they have positioned themselves higher than your knowledge of God as a healer. That when you stand before a doctor and a diagnosis is given to you that this is cancer, instantly you see death. You don't see the power of the God that you serve. So in that moment, cancer has exalted itself against the knowledge of your God. The Bible says that these weapons that we'll be discussing, these weapons that we'll be highlighting, are these weapons that you will use when any information comes to you or you happen to jam anything that wants to exalt itself above the knowledge of your God. Do you have understanding? Or do I repeat myself? Should I repeat so you can understand? Amen? When you go, I say before a doctor, because my desire, and I believe that's the desire of the Holy Spirit, is to bring you understanding. Now, you will receive special care from the Holy Spirit if the information coming to you becomes useless. 
If you think that being a believer is to come into the four walls of a place and sit down, and that is what makes you a Christian, you go home and you sleep quietly. You don't look for anybody's trouble. Nobody looks for your trouble. You have not seen warfare. You, have not, you are not a Christian or you are not important in the, in the calendar of things concerning the damage coming to Satan. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Anyone who is a genuine believer is in warfare. So you have to know this. You stand before the doctor. You know in your knowledge of God. God paid the price for your healing. But you stand before the doctor and the doctor says you have cancer. And instantly that information begins to kill you. You are unable to hang on to the eternal word. We read on Sunday. Those who fix their gaze on this eternal word of God. Amen. They fix their gaze on it. They steadily keep their eyes on it. They are not like the one who reads it and goes out. Scripture says when he comes, when immediately he goes out, he forgets how he looks in the mirror. There are so many people that come to church, hear the message of God, the moment they go out and one attack occurs, they forget totally what they have heard about God. Totally what was said, they forget. Their confessions begin to align with what Satan has said. I am trusting God for believers out of this latter house Christian center that regardless of what Satan says, what will consistently be in front of you is what God says in the name of Jesus Christ. I said in the name of Jesus Christ. Every high thing that seems to exalt itself against the knowledge of God and you are able to, by these weapons, bring in every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. What does this scripture mean? If Christ says this, you situation, you must obey Christ. By what? By this weapon I'm using. And I will show you some of these weapons. We use them every day. But sometimes we don't know it's even a weapon. That's why the man of God will come up and say, let's make a decree. And as he's saying it, you are just talking. Because you don't know that a decree is a weapon. Once a decree, go, that's why it's called a decree. It's called a decree. It's called also in another, and every, any decree that is not declared is not empowered. Any decree that is not declared, what is that? It's not empowered. The moment the decree is declared, how does the decree of a king get declared? It can be stamped by a wall, it can be anywhere. But if the king wrote it and kept it in his room, it will only die with the king in his room. But once it is put where everybody can see it, and you read it, that's a declaration. That's the reason we have something called benediction. And we repeat it. That's the reason why this year, you must learn to wake up every morning, take the decree of the, the latter house Christian center for 2023. Stand up in your room before you go to ease yourself. Declare it. And I will show you from scripture. You see, some years ago, I don't know if the people who have been with me for long will remember. Some years ago, God compelled me to begin to study the demonic world. That was when God gave me the revelation of Mammon as a person and revealed him to me. And several times, by visions and by chances, I have met with him, eyeball to eyeball. I have seen his hatred for the kingdom of God. Let me tell you what the Lord told me this night. I woke up around two or three, and I started to pray. I was moving around in the room. I have oil. Amen. I anoint the house every day. So, uh, anybody that knows me knows that, you know, even Prof used to say, I don't sleep, I'll be moving around like witch over the whole, whole house. It's true, now witches move around at night. But I hope you know that everything any witch is doing is copying what is in Christ Jesus. There is, see, the devil has no power to invent anything. Everything you, you see him do, be rest assured, is found in scripture. And he's taken it, twisted it, and made it used for his own service. So I got up to pray. And I began to speak in tongues. I had oil in my hand. I poured the oil in the middle of the room. 
I didn't want to go out. So I said, Father, let the ministering spirits that I know are around here take this oil and go around every door, go to the, every house of my children, go to the houses of the members of Lathouse Christian Center and put it on them and put it at their doorpost. It's my responsibility, it's my job. Praise God. Praise God. And then, suddenly a thought came into my head. The scripture said, bringing into captivity every thought. A thought came into my head about the financial situations that happened within that house, or I'll say, with me, coming into this city. And then I clearly heard the voice of God. Anybody, again, let me say, that knows me will tell you. I can just tell you that this is a story. Even if it's with Houston, I want to tell you. I will sing, I have sang her song in front of you. Nobody is paying me. So I have no business to impress anybody. Nobody is paying me. Nobody goes home with me. Nobody is in that room with me. I'm inside that room by myself. So I, I don't have any... When I say God told me, God told me. The Spirit of God began to talk to me. And he showed me a picture. When we drove into Plateau. Glory be to God. Before we came, the day we made the announcement in Meduguri that the headquarters of Lathouse Christian Center is moving to Plateau, that day, the demons and the sorcerers and the witches and wizards over Borno State began to rejoice. And the ones in Plateau began to arrange. I'm telling you a thought here, the Lord. He said from the day we entered into this city, they were aware. And here's what happens. They don't act immediately. They sit down and watch you. Whether you are serious about the things you are saying. Because one of the things that they don't have is they don't have word of knowledge. Bamshan, it's called the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Not the gift of demons. Demons don't have word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Speaking, they, they, they speak in tongues. I'll get to that, but, but not as a gift. As you, you, it's not the gift that the demon spirit is giving them. I'll tell you how they get into that. Amen? So, they don't know whether you are serious. Then they start to watch you. They keep their gaze on you. One year, two year, three year passes. You are serious. Too. These people are serious. Then, the first thing these spirits do is that they begin a search for human vessels. I desire in my heart, truly, that you will hear this message correctly. The God of heaven that gave me this revelation, if you take it and twist it, if you carry it outside and twist it and think it is aimed at any physical human being that was in this hall and left, the guilt is on your head because it didn't come out of my mouth. I know how Christians can sit down in a sermon and twist it and say, you heard when pastor said, she was talking about, I'm not talking about anybody but you sitting down here and listening to me. Amen. The spirits look for human vessels, human bodies. They enter into those human bodies. Now, what makes the demonic world in our present day system complicated is that they are no longer in jungles with chalk on their face. Amen. Encourage me by knowing that, by saying that, amen. Let me know you are here. We are talking about things that are relevant that can make or mar you. To be honest with you, it can make or mar you. If you are in church to enjoy, Satan is not on earth to enjoy. He's here to make sure you die miserably and you go to hell. Still kill and destroy. So in these days, food not in your mouth, prayers being said, Declarations being said, if you have never been serious, this is the time. Because no, I don't know anything else that you want God to do for you. 
But the Lord told me, when they find these human vessels, they begin to arrange how these human vessels will come in. That is why the greatest gift he told me, as far as he is concerned, is of the discernment of spirits. Because you are living in a world that is controlled by spirits. So the gift that the believer, and, and listen to me, I'm not asking you or telling you that the Holy Spirit said I should tell you to have a suspicious spirit. There is a difference between discernment of spirit and suspicion. Glory be to God. 99.9% .9 of people use suspicion and call it Holy Spirit. And call it discern. We have called it all kinds of names. From the first day I saw this sister, I just, my, my blood and her blood didn't mix. Your blood and her blood were not meant to mix. That's why your blood is in your body. Her own is in her own body. Everybody should keep his own blood. Amen to the Lamb of God. There is only one blood that is supposed to, that came out of one other body and is supposed to be on us. What's the name of the owner of that blood? Call it again. Did he say it is Lacan's blood that should be on your forehead or mix with your own? Amen, no? If your blood is not mixing with Lacan's own inside church, please find the person who, who, in fact, if your blood is not mixing with his blood, which it should not in the first place, find another seat and be sitting there. Don't go out and say he is possessing one spirit because when you sat near him, you felt heat. It's because of the layers of clothes you are wearing. It has nothing to do with who you sat next to. Amen? When that thought came into my mind, that was what the Lord told me. And then he said, they have, you have proven beyond every shadow of their doubt because men have made promises to God to the hearing of Satan and have not completed it even when they can. But the devil has watched by his demons and his witches and his wizards what you have done that is uh, indicative of the fact that you are serious with this God. Then they swing into action. Amen. The Spirit of God brought something back to my memory that I never thought had anything to do with God. Even when I was preaching, I used to say, after every five years, I have noticed in that house something changes. Amen. And I said, you are married. Wait until after five years have passed. Then you have mouth to talk. Amen. And the Spirit of God told me, he said, by the fifth year of Lathouse Christian Center in Plateau was when they pulled back the small, small boys in the realms of demons and sent forth extinguishers. But by virtue of mercy and grace, By virtue of being vulnerable before men and God, they were defeated. The Spirit of God said to me, those demons feed on pride, grow by pride. As you refuse to be vulnerable before God and man, you feed them. So those people who threatened me that latter house will close, knew exactly what they were saying but they didn't know what my reaction would be hallelujah they underestimated your love for god they underestimated your yieldedness even you underestimated yourself somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. it says you bring these thoughts into captivity to obey what Christ has said. Verse 6, which is where we stop from the scripture. And be ready to punish careful choice of words.
punish all disobedience when your obedience is what? Fulfilled. Amen. In other words, there is a place you are going to get to in your work with God that you have a right to get up and punish in hell, on earth, in heaven. Anything and any spirit that refuses to walk in consonance with the will and the total counsel of God. Amen. The last one we will do is when we will judge angels. Us as humans. The angels assigned to minister to you. You are going to judge them. Amen. Listen. The angel that was sent to Daniel knew Daniel will one day judge him. The only thing he was done was giving a, an answer to a prayer to come and give Daniel. When he arrived over Babylon, amen, he met powers that legally watch over the location of Daniel. Daniel had no understanding of the fact that the very day he knelt down, that same day, according to the time of life, not the time of God, an angel was sent forth with the answer. It was never God's intention that you have to wait for one year what he can give you in one week. But there is warfare that you have refused to fight. We are microwave Christians. We have heard this said before. Took it, press button, took it out. Amen? Diabetic Christians. <laughs> Christians who like only sugar. Sugar, 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 sugar. It is well with you. Amen. You will rise up. Hey. Amen. You, will you are not a tither. You are not a sister. You are not a prayer warrior. You have five boyfriends. You are adulterous. You are fornicating. And you will be blessed. And by the, by the loudness of your amen. Let's keep going. The only thing you leave that church with is diabetes. Because they just pumped you with spiritual sugar. Elbow your neighbor say you have responsibility. Elbow your neighbor, say you have responsibility. You think that because you showed up for a crossover, you will cross over? Hey! Then you don't know who Satan is. You think that because you got pregnant and you gave birth to a child, eh? you will see the wife or the husband of that child and see the child of that child? No, there are things that God has given to you, but the weapons of our warfare. Meaning we are at war. That I, look at your sister say uh, you don't know since say there's something called army of the lord it's called army amen it's called army it's not called choir it's called army not singers of the lord it's called army Shout an amen, somebody. Amen. What do army people do? The army. Either on the offensive or on the defensive. But the best type of warfare is offensive. Take the battle to the gates of your enemy. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus was our first example. He casted out demons here on earth. But when redemption came, which was the true purpose of his showing, he went to the gates of hell. Glory be to God. He took the battle to a territory of darkness. There is a believer listening to me tonight that as we pray, we are taking the battle to the gates of the enemy. Yeah. Slap your neighbor. Say, the season is past that I am on the defensive. Tell that to your neighbor, I am now on the offensive. I expect to say... I want you to stand up and tell five people, I am gearing up to be on the offensive. I am not going to sit down here and allow Satan to confess. Then I will start looking for how I will defend myself. 
Shabayaba. Le Procosho do Loboho. Le Braga Jatayabaha. I said, find five people. Who finished my water? It's Bamshak that finished my water. Bamshak, find me my water back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are not that dumping ground of Satan. It's not in your house. Satan will come and throw his dustbin. High five your neighbor. Say we are here at warfare. But you know what? I have your back. 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 Come on. Come on. Believe us. Tell your neighbor I have your back. I will speak in tongues on your behalf. I will prophesy on your behalf. I will decree on your behalf. I will intercede on your behalf. I have your back. As long as I am here, you will not fail. The devil will not see your back on the ground. The devil will not see your back on the ground. I have your back. I'm standing with you in season and out of season. I am a friend that sticks even closer than a brother. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor. I am a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Sister, you don't have anybody to tell. You don't tell anybody, nobody will tell you. Je prodo koshi ala rabaha. Zabla gado shi ade baha. Eh kata ya rabaha baba. Tell your neighbor when you can pray, I'll pray for you. Hey! Tell that person I'm just a phone call away. Tell the person I'm a phone call away. I'm just a text away. You don't even have to call. Just send me a text. This is your prayer point. You can be rest assured. I'll be standing on my two. If you are not talking to somebody, I will call your name through this microphone. They will know that you are the disobedient one. Glory be to God. Tell your brother, I have your back, my brother. I have your back. I have your back. Somebody give God a shout. Somebody give God a shout. Let the warriors of Zion give God a shout. Glory be to God. Amen. Today we are going to be talking about one of those weapons that is given to us, which is fasting. Amen. And as the days progress, we keep going Tuesday, we keep coming Tuesday, Friday, Sunday, you'll be hearing diverse weapons so that you have your artillery. Is that how they call it in the military? You have your artillery full. There are certain things that fasting will do. There are certain things that prayer will do. There are certain things declaration will do. There are certain things the communion will do. There are certain things laying of hands will do. There are certain things that pouring of oil will do. There are certain things that giving will do. There are certain things that intercession, not just prayer, will do. You will learn the weapons. You will know how they operate. And by that time that you are ending the series, you are armed. With the whole armor of God. Wherein you are able to withstand all the vials of the enemy. Perhaps I give me back my water. They told me that you are the one that finished my water. Amen to the Lamb of God. Prayer band, I'll be having special sessions with you because there are certain teachings of prayer that if I bring it here, they will say, this is not a church again. What, what is happening to the body of Christ is what Boko Haram did when they go to the Lungu and go and see military people. Soldiers of Nigeria legally wearing their uniform. Collect their armory. Catch the soldiers because they came more armed. You can't catch a witch that doesn't minister to her altar before going out. You roll out of bed, wear your jeans and check out. You will not find a sorcerer, a wizard, that will jump out of bed. And just start going. No, sir. You can't go to the house 
of a wizard, a witch, a sorcerer, a witch doctor, and not see the paraphernalia. There are people who come to church without the Bible. And you wonder why you are a prey. You wonder why you are a prey. You wonder why some people go through worse things than others and those ones kill themselves and these ones didn't kill themselves. Now different things they inside their body. Glory be to God. <laughs> the way that demons can possess you and cause you to not see your victory and be sad enough to commit suicide all by the actions of demons you send your soul to the devil as an entertainer you know what the Lord told me just this evening I was looking for which week to wear that will not disturb me then I heard in my spirit entertainment I said father what does that mean he said enter a doorway that they can use to enter. I took my pen and started to look for uh, my phone and started to look for the spelling. Let me see whether it starts with I or E. You know, you know, you know now. There, no, you know, there's one moment you are, you are taking, uh, you know, uh, unaware of something. The first word in entertainment is enter. Huh? Hey, yeah. So they want to enter you. Just the same. Do you understand what I'm saying? See the way you are looking. I'm not, I'm not saying you can't watch comedy. Do you understand? Amen. Calm down. Holy Spirit too. Holy Spirit too. Cracks jokes. How many of you have ever heard Jesus laugh? Jesus can laugh. Oh. Jesus can laugh. Jesus can crack jokes. You see, when I tell you that I buy high heel shoes because I can't buy height. It was the Lord who told me. I love shoes. I went for one meeting, they took a picture of us ministers, and I was the shortest. The cameraman had to come down like this to be able to pick my face, as if by some way of choice to generally just embarrass me, they decided to invite all the other preachers. They were tall, tall people. And I'm not, I went back to my room. I said, God, why did you do this? He said, I gave you option. They don't have option. They can't kneel, but you can climb. I said, what do you mean, Lord? He said, buy high heel. What do you have with God? A relationship? Or what? It's just to plant it that says, I have fellowship. I learned that word from him. He said, he said I, I have fellowship. I talk with him, he talks with me, and there are so many people in the, in the world that are angry that he will say, he says, hello, Jesus, and Jesus says, hello, Jesse. That, he, that, you know, he's blaspheming because of the awesomeness of God. He's so awesome, he sucked the breast of Mary to live. Amen. Fasting. Fasting. This is one weapon that we are using this day. And, and I beg you, eh? This 21 days past, then you say, okay, ah, thank God. This, this resident pastor and his wife. Even me, I was saying, it seemed that put us inside all this. What kind of things is 21 days? What are you doing 21 days for? Let's just do 21 days of beating the devil's ass. The injury will carry him for the rest of the year. Amen. But the Lord is opening my eyes to see, Allah, this year, I need your agreement. I need your agreement to whip the butt of Satan. He won't see us coming. He won't see us coming. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He won't see us coming. I want you to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. He will not see us coming this year. Very quickly, because we are going to pray. You came with your oil. I'm not laying hands on you. You lift up the oil. You pray. You go home. You lay for yourself. Amen. He said, just this verse 11. He, he was, I mean, if you, if you go home, you read from verse 1 what the story is about. That God them to the place where this statement was made by the, by the Lord. He said, least Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of what? His devices. Do you even know the devices of Satan when you see it? 
Do you see something and know that this is Satan? We got to the place in the body of Christ where we say that sickness is God that brought it on somebody to humble the person. Since when does the rod of wickedness become the instrument of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it's the same way, amen, that the believer will come to church and pray that the message will touch him. But what he's actually looking for is spiritual sugar. Spiritual sugar. Somebody has prayed the prayers, you are walking in the victory. No. Even the God that dies, died on the cross, gave you his broken body and his shed blood. He's the same one who spoke through Paul to the Corinthians, talking about warfare. He expects you to fight. Because your goods are being sat upon by demon spirits. How did the scripture say? For an effective and fervent door has been opened unto you. Who opens doors? God, right? But what did you see when the doors got open? Huh? He said there are many, you want to read the Bible? What did you see when the doors were open? Many adversaries. Are adversaries your friends? Are there people you sit down at the table and eat with? They are the people you fight with. So it means that you can't enter into your blessing until you know how to fight your adversary. And in order to fight your adversary, you have to study your adversary. If Arsenal is going to win Barcelona, they have to identify the players. Bamsak is already laughing. Amen. Let me tell you what happened. They used to come, all of them have Barcelona uh, shirts with their names in the back. That's how you deceive yourself. You are, there, you are the one. And you are not the one. Jesse has his own. Jesse, Joshua has his own. Joshua. His bomb shark went to do all of it. He put his own bomb shark. He put, uh, what's his name? Joe Thompson. When it is time for a match, Baka is playing. Come and see the living room. They will off the light. Everybody will come out. They are, they are, they are, cloth that is made with their name on they, they will carry it and go and wear back a uniform and come and sit down in front I didn't say they were anywhere near Spain they were in just <laughs> if you see them analyze Messi and now in, the, in, in, that, in that game that they, 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 they played in where well, well, that was where uh, Ronaldo look for the trouble of Messi and that one all the, they don't have time they will put some people in suit in a studio arguing amongst themselves analyzing the game glory be to God so if Barcelona knows that they are going to face Arsenal there is a time where they will sit down as a team not just be at the, at the rehearsal ground to study how their enemies play who are the key players in Arsenal? They will call out their names. When we are going out, there is something called attack. They are the one called defense. They are these ones called strikers. Then there is the one called goalkeeper. Everybody should know his position and stand there. Those who are attackers will always want to score the goal. They will always give those people whose leg has 360 degree movement. With the heel of their feet, they can score a goal. Then there are those who can fly. They are human beings. But when they see the ball coming, it's coming this way. They are standing here in one second. They are human bodies, but they take on the nature of spirits. They fly and they catch the goal. Then there are others that were mistakenly made goalkeepers that turned around and kicked the goal by themselves or the ball by themselves into the net of their own team and added a goal for their enemy. Have you seen this happen before? There are Christians that are scoring goals for Satan inside the church of Jesus Christ. There are, there, there, there are. for every time that you discourage a human being 
about church and about God and about ministry and about whatever, and you kept that person at home, you are supposed to be amongst the team, but you turned around. Ask yourself, if earthly people will put stand punishment on players that have then look at the ones that score goal. A team of 11 people, but you know only three names. Because if they are not in that match, I've seen my children mourn. Because they benched Mercy or Neymar, who is it? I don't know their names. Me, I will go there and ask when the match is about to end. Who are the people winning? When they say it's this group, I say that's where I belong. If it happens to be Barcelona, I'm a back, back half -half. After the match, when they start calling each other, their friends from wherever, my, my, my mom to be inside. Yes, we, we, are, <laughs> we, we, we have carried the team. We, are, we have won. I don't even know that is Division 1, Division 2. We have won. That's all. Glory be to God. You are more than an overcomer. You are in the company of champions. Nothing connects you with losers. Shout that out to the Lord. I am in the company of champions. I am more than a conqueror because of what Jesus did on the cross. Declarations are warfare. You are saying it now. Every demon that wanted to make you a failure is hearing what you are saying. I am in the company of champions. I am not a loser. They are hearing you. The scribes of heaven are writing it. Glory be to God. We study his devices. We know him from 10 miles when he's coming. No matter how he disguised himself. David said, my soul escaped out of the snare of the fowler. Glory be to the name of the Lord. He said, the snare is broken and I'm escaped. Because my hope is in the name of the Lord. A snare is when you dig a hole and you cover it and make it normal. The animal you want to catch will not know that there is a hole there. But scripture said your soul has escaped. Can somebody shout that one? My soul has escaped out of the snare of the fowler. Glory be to God. Every word that you decree out of your mouth, especially with a fast, shall definitely come to pass in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Give me Joel chapter 1 verse 13 to 14. Fasting is a weapon. It's not starvation. So you fast and you don't use that period when there's no food in your mouth to announce things. You just starved. Guard yourselves and lament you priests. Hallelujah. Well, you who minister before the altar, come, lie all night. Oh, how my spirit desires that we move to our own location. Because this is my calling. If I don't know how to do anything, I know how to do this one. Glory be to God. From a spinster. Amen. If you know the attacks that I've, uh, I've gone through, and the hand of God preserved me, and kept me through the years in this thing called ministry, <laughs> You haven't seen anything. I have sat in counseling where people will come and say this is their problem. Why they want to kill themselves. I'll be saying let's exchange places in my heart. Then you will know. The reason you have not killed yourself is the one in you. You know why the devil doesn't want you to pray? Do you know that there are people under the sound of my voice that are under the oppression of a spirit called silence? That is why a declaration is made. They can't say amen. Stand up. Let us pray. They will stand up. They can't articulate their words. It is actually a demon. It sits upon your, your tongue. And will not allow it to open. But let me tell you something about such people. Who cannot pray. They don't stop talking once they are out of church. When they are now in the area. In the environment that their spirit understands, they can't keep quiet. As I'm saying this now, you judge yourself. Where do you talk the most? 
Where do you talk the most? And at what time do you talk? In the presence of your father, there's nothing like I'm quiet. All of us are not quiet. Because he didn't say they that think it, receive it. He said they that ask. That means there's an opening of your mouth. Don't see some of us shaking our head, sweating. He say, yeah, it's problem they are facing. No, brother, it's not problem. We are sent as deliverers, even to others who we have not yet not seen with our natural eyes. Who is listening to me? Well, you who minister before the altar. That means, choir, do you minister before the altar? Then you should have all night. Then your son can have sense. Let me say it again. It is good to rehearse. But it is good to pray so much so that the Holy Ghost owns the song. I have watched on TV. I have not seen it with my natural eyes. But I have watched on TV where a man was playing keyboard. He got slain under the power. And the keyboard kept playing. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I saw it. I watched it on TV. In my own ministry. I have heard the testimonies. That occurred when I go before God in worship. Just as I worship. Blind eyes have opened. And I didn't lay hands on anybody. And there are living witnesses here alive today. This year I trust God. Their feet will step into latter house. And then they will tell you the story. So I'm saying to you. Choir master. If you know how to. Go and climb that altar. And know that in your place as a priest. You give attention to intercession. Combined with fastings. Lie in sackcloth. You who are ministers to my God. Why? Because the grain offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. Amen? 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 Amen. Amen. Why should we turn it into a song instead of a prayer? It's not supposed to be a song. It's supposed to be a prayer. But we don't know how to pray. Because the ministry is their own. If you are part of any church suffering, you are part of the blame as much as you are part of the glory. Silence. Let's go to 14. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly when you see a lack in the house. That's what ministers should do. Consecrate a fast. Call an assembly. The lot of house pastors, I was not in Joss, I think. I wasn't in Joss when you guys met to pray at home. To have an all night, right? I think you just said, was I in Joss? I wasn't in Joss. The pastors met to pray. Met in my house. Okay, we don't have any. We have prayer ban. Ten days. Back to back. Night vigil. They had it in my house. Back to back. I can tell you that things began to change. But we cannot slow down momentum. Because the enemy will not come until you are fasted after 40 days. When you are hungry, then he comes. But what he doesn't know is that the fasting weakens your natural body but energizes your spiritual being. Amen. Consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into where? The house of the Lord your God. That's why he doesn't want us to have the house of the Lord our God. Because he knows that we are people who are prayer warriors. Beloved, I pastor church in Meduguri where your enemies are physical. You can see them with guns. They could not kill me. I make bold to say, I've also pastored in Joss. Where my enemies were spiritual. Witches and wizards. Warlocks, witches and sorcerers. All kinds, but I'm still standing on my own two feet. Because there is an excellent God 
who has made a vow to any one of his servants, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Clap your hand for this God that is able to keep you. Clap your hand. Clap your hand. Clap your hand. I did not bury a child of mine in Medjugorje when Boko Haram came against us. And even in this city, I did not bury and I will not bury anyone under the sound of my voice. You shall not bury your loved ones in the name of Jesus. That does not mean that death did not visit my house. I shared with you the testimonies. That does not mean that death did not visit my house. Glory be to God. Even when Sharon, this, the last grandchild I had, even when Sharon was in the labor world, her sister was with her. Her mother-in-law was there. Her husband was there. They were praying until the baby came out. All the reports of the doctors, they pushed it aside. Stephanie, at one point, she said, Mommy, because I was saying, the camera, she said, Mom, wait. Off the something. There's need for prayer. Stood beside her sister, her hands on her, making declarations. And you are not taking my sister, you are not taking my niece. You are not touching anybody here. Amen. You know, when women get into that place, there's a, there's a time a husband will see a wife, he won't know what to say. Amen. I said, Amen. So, if your friends are drunkards, when you enter labor world, it's drunkards that will follow you. When they, they, in fact, they will not see that. They will invite him. They will come with him. Be moving around, having friends anyhow this year. Don't blame anybody. When you go and enter friendship with demons, don't call anybody's name and don't call anybody's church. Call yourself. Amen. Surround yourself with people who come and take your time. And, and mind you, the time is not yours. It belongs to God. They take the time that God has given to you to pull down the kingdom of God. You will answer. Hmm? Amen. Amen. I have not finished. Have you finished reading it? No, it says, bring them into the house of the Lord your God and cry out to God. Bamsak, God is watching the oppression of his people. He's watching. He's watching as the people are oppressed. He's waiting for them to cry. 430 years when they said nothing, he did nothing. But when they sighed unto God, then he spoke to Abraham. Amen. I remember the day in their house when the Holy Spirit tapped me like this. Are you going to lie down here until you bury your grandchild? I heard his voice. Then I got up. I went to their room and started praying. Went around everywhere and started praying. That was the healing of that child. I can give you testimony after testimony. Glory be to God. Every day I see Jamil. I, can't I still have the picture. When I'm entering into a new year, when I'm raising altars of praise and worship to God for the past years, that picture is one of those pictures I, I bring before the Lord. If you could bring this child against all medical anything, by the decrees, we kept decreeing. Doctor was talking, we were decreeing. Bamsak was decreeing. Stephanie was saying amen. And he can't do this, can't he? They, they put life support. They do whatever they did. Bamsak went and, 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 and said, we were doing exchange, exchange. He went, he stayed. All night, he was with his wife during the labor. Then he had a one second or whatever sleep. And one demon-possessed witch inside the hospital. You carry yourself and go to hospital. You don't know that hospitals are the... How will I say it? Hospitals are portals. The way angels come up and go down. Hospitals are the place where demons go, go, go up and go down to. Nurses, doctors, and whatever are very easy vessels. Because every day they are around a spirit of infirmity. Every time their phone rings, somebody is under the oppression of the spirit of infirmity. You carry yourself, you go to the hospital. They give you the medicine. After they give you, that's what ends up killing you. Amen. I said, Amen. What does God expect you to do? Cry out to God. Eh? Even as you are inside the hospital, 
there are people praying for you. I was going to in, in for surgery. I called my children. In the seven hours they were praying. Seven hours. What kind of children have you raised? They can sit in front of Nicolaitan for seven hours. They cannot pray for seven minutes. And you see them, you laugh, you pass. You are going to church. They say, I don't feel like coming. You say, okay, just wait at home. You are not serious. You are in my house. You are going to church. When you build your own house, you can stay at home. You are coming to church. When it's time to pray, you pray. One of the trying... See, oh God, may the Lord, may the Lord not allow your eyes to see a child that does not have God. God won't allow you. I have ministered to mothers that were beaten by their sons. Their father used to beat them. The child grew up. Instead of defending his mother, he's now using his energy. The mother talks to her, give up, pow. turn around, give up. Talk again. You marry your husband, he beat you. The child where you born beat you. What is your story? What is your story? When you see women like us rolling on the floor, you say, yeah, I see them. It's all right. When you come to church and you, you, are, you are still, you are, you, are still <laughs> you are still aware of what you are wearing, how much it costs, Satan will show you that nobody paid any price for him, so he has no respect for the cost of your clothes. Amen. I said Amen. We, we don't remove our shoes in praise and worship. Throw it and roll on the ground. Because we are broke. <laughs> yep. It's because we have sat down, we have told ourselves the truth. We don't have anything except Jesus. Are we going to come before him and pose? Help me now, sis. We, what do we have? Does anybody here? I know all of you. What do you have outside Jesus Christ? What do, sis, what do you have? Brother, you, you are even a staff of church. Your own is worse. You are working in church. Everything about you is in church. You don't have work outside where you have colleagues and contacts. But there can be a staff of church that is a sorcerer. You don't know? When he turns around and kicks the goal to score inside our own house, he's a, he's a demon. Go back about this. There are prayers that you have paid. God carried the womb of those who have no mothers and fathers put inside your stomach. Now you burn them. Are you the one that made them into offers? But that is how you know you belong to God. Where your life is not just about those people who are immediate to you. But there are people whose cause is so intense that even those who are related to them are not benefiting from them. Their cause is intense. If you can't bless the ones that God gave to you, how do you bless outsiders? Your cause is intense. That is why a servant could come to a wife and tell her, do you go, go out and save this household. For you know that our master is the son of Belial. It was written in the Bible. I didn't put it there. Amen. I said amen. I said amen. amen. A house help can come into your house with witches and wizards in her stomach. Demons lying down left, right, and center. When you are a woman of your own salt, and salt is one of those things we talk about, you will understand how to take it and sprinkle it around your house. I'm telling you the truth. There is a cleansing that salt does outside of consecration. Glory be to the Lamb of God. There are prayers that I've prayed. When I got to the place, I saw myself at the gates. Between life and death. There are things I summoned. There are weapons I used. I trust God to enable me to be able to tell you. Sometimes it's the faces of two, three people that makes you just keep quiet. Because it looks like they are not interested in knowledge. Amen. 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 <laughs> Give me the same Joel, chapter 2, verse 13. Let's jump, just jump one chapter. The same Joel, chapter 2, and verse 13. Bobby? Put them on. It's open? Please. Glory be to God. Joel, chapter 2, verse 13. We're reading all the way to 17. It says, it says rend your heart, not your garments. Break inside here. This, this place is where God has problem with his children. Here. How do you sit next to a brother in church and you hate that person? Or how do you sit next to a brother in church that you have just finished killing outside? I don't know how people do it. I don't know how people smile 
with people that they are, they are talking about everywhere and anywhere. That's why I, I said there are some Christians that are wasting. You should just go to Hollywood. These actors need demons to possess them before they act well. You, no demon, you have not sold your soul to the devil, but you are, you are such an actor that the person sitting next to you doesn't even know that you are a deceiver. Rend your hearts, not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Give me his description. Read it together. He is slow to anger and of and he uh huh give me verse 14 right right uh huh uh huh give me verse 15 we are stopping at 17 yes 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 yeah sanctify the con are you seeing the, co the conditions then go ahead uh-huh and which one hold it nothing what and uh, i can't come to church because i just give back amen after bed, the woman needs to stay at home for 40 days. Doing what? Where is it written? Until you show me. I lived it. My children lived it. Amen? I carry Sharon in my hand two weeks after delivery. Exactly two weeks. I was inside the Young Shall Grow bus that has refused to grow up to now. From there to Lagos. She was on my laps from Meduguri to Lagos. I was going to minister. Where was I going to minister? In Portacourt. But there was no direct vehicle to Portacourt. So I carried this two weeks old baby. I was breastfeeding her. I didn't have pampas. I had napkin. So I roll it. Wherever the bus stops, where people will eat, I will tie her on my back. I will wash the napkin. I will come and put it on the handle of my chair. Arrived in Lagos, was picked from Lagos to Port Harcourt. And I went there. I was ministry, laying hands on the sick, doing this other one. When I do, I hand over the microphone to choir people. They are singing. I run to the room because I did exclusive breastfeeding for six months. I will run inside. I put the breast in her mouth. She will suck it. I will come outside and take the microphone and continue the ministration. Five days. And got into the same bus and came back. You cannot leave Rayfield and come to this place. But when the year is ending, you have a list of what he should do for you 2023. Can I stop on behalf of God and ask you, what did you do for him in 2022? You are not in any department. You are only in the department of sightseeing. You come to see what, what is happening. Then you go back. Now, Jeffa, the church has not died. They are trying. Thank you. External examiner. Supervisor. You are playing with hell. You think hell is playing with you. Until you close your eyes on this side of eternity and open it and expect to see angels and you see demons. Ah! There's no time to come back. It's appointed unto man. Oh, let them laugh at you, servant of God. Let them say, look at you, mumu, follow, follow. Every time I see your face on Facebook, you are in church. It's because every time you see my face also from hell, I'll be in heaven. That's if you can see from there to here. Nothing on this part of the country is what you're losing heaven for. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Nothing. Nothing. There was, listen, we've served and we're still serving. This testimony I was giving you, I was 20 something years old. Or 30 something, I can't remember. Hallelujah. I carried Stephanie on my back. I was coaching the choir of the teaching hospital. If you know me, Duguri, I will trek from the Mwa Road to the teaching hospital with her on my back. One day, rain beat us. I arrived in the place. Me, I couldn't change my cloth, but I had the bag of hers that had cloth for me to change for her. 
She caught pneumonia. We didn't have 100 naira to buy medication for her. But on the merit of that service, glory be to God, was the prayer I prayed. She was beaten by this rain when I went to exalt your name. Therefore, God, I demand healing. You have already paid the price, even if I was lying down at home. We don't have 100 naira to buy antibiotics for this child. Oh God, heal her. She's sitting here. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I went to minister to the people of God. I wasn't looking for honorarium. I was not looking for money. When a woman who had a beast with proof injected Joshua with poison, he was eight months old. His nanny ran out and met me. She said, I don't understand what has happened to him. This doctor said he had fever, so she gave him injection. This doctor, she went back into the hall. From into the hall, she took another road and left. That was when Joshua began to drain. I was looking at my child. He, his form was no longer the form of a human being. It was the form of a demon. Big head, no body. The body was all like this. Eight months. He would cry like it's a goat. Uh, no tears. Then the girl remembered. She said, when she gave him the injection, I took the container and kept it inside my bag. I said, inside the baby bag. I said, bring it. She brought it. Then I gave it to Dr. Ville. I said, what is this thing? Dr. Ville put his hand on his head. He said, Doc, don't me again, Awaji. I said, you will tell me what is this. Then he said, it is poison. This child will not survive. That is when I guarded up my loins. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I said, glory be to the Lamb of God. Yeah. Night and day, I began to pray for my child. Stephanie is lying down with this hand. I'm holding him on this hand. The father is either in the room or somewhere. I am making intercession in tongues. Wishy-washy mothers who only know how to sleep with guys. You go for meetings where they teach you. Whether it's dog style or this style or that style. There's a time that style will finish. And the tenacity of your spirit has to come out. Who you are in God, not in bed. That is what will come out and sustain you through life. Somebody heard what I said. I said who you are in God, not in bed. That is what will sustain you. That's what will give you the victories of the battles of life. Glory be to God. Oh, I know how to sleep with a man. Let me tell you what goats know how to sleep with their own goatees. Amen. But out of this house, God is raising the poorest. Even if God has changed his mind about you can lay your hands. A husband of blood have you been to me. But your sustenance is still predicated on my pronouncements. Yes, I came out of witchcraft. But out of those idolatries, I've learned the ways of your God. That you have not learned. So she knows how to cut the foreskin and spill the blood. And the blood began to speak. She was the daughter of a priest. What is happening to the daughters of pastors today? I ask a question. Where are mothers raising Christian giants? Those who know their place in God that can stand. And let me tell you what. So that somebody doesn't leave this place and begin to cry. Because Satan is dancing around your child. Let me tell you. There is no intercession of a woman that brings a child into the world. That is ever poured to the ground. They are gathered in a system. When the system is full. Jehovah himself will rise up. He himself will cry out. Enough is enough. He will say to Pharaoh. This is my firstborn. At that time you are not the, 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 the son of Jacob. You are now the son of God. There is a time that your intercession. Will switch your child. From bearing your name. To bearing the name of Christ. I know I'm ministering to somebody here tonight. There is a time that your children become the children of God. Bam Shaka, are you hearing me? That beyond your correction, beyond your discipline, beyond your instructions, they will be able to have instructions that will come from God. When they open their mouths and they speak, you will know that foundations were laid. The coals are still hot. Who cares whether you conceive by IVF or raise the child by G-O-S-P-E-L. Even though it tarries. 
even though it tarries. We are not of them that draw back onto perdition. Look at our back. It's not broom, it's bone. <laughs> Somebody tell your neighbor, say, look my back. It's not broom, it's bone. I don't break. Greater is he. Is the word of God coming to you tonight? Greater is he. How many people can boldly say that and not be lying? Greater is he in me than he that is in the world. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The knowledge of that scripture, Jonathan. The knowledge of that one scripture. You can take a fast to just pray that scripture for a week. One sentence. Stay on it. I stayed on a scripture in the book of Genesis for three years. Gather the children and the nursing babies. Bamzak, please, I want to ask you. Nursing babies. Nursing babies. Gather them, consecrate it fast. And then when you are coming, come with even nursing babies. What is their significance? Is God telling you he's transgenerational? When you read the book of Exodus, Bamzak, maybe you help me find it. When... Uh, Moses was negotiating with Pharaoh that they are going into the wilderness to go and worship their God. He told them, he said, leave your children behind. Carry yourself and go. Go as far as you can go inside the wilderness. Any mother, any father, under the sound of my voice, that is not playing a role in the spiritual food of their children, the day is coming, God is going to ask you questions. I will see the answer you will give that God about your job that consumes your time. Every parent is expected to know how to gather the nursing babies, bring into the congregation of the righteous. Even the bridegroom, let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her dressing room. Glory be to God. Why? 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 Let the priest who minister between the porch and what? The altar. Let them say, spare your people, O oh Lord, and do not give your heritage to reproach. This year, 2023, is the year to pray this prayer. Because kings are coming. That might sell your nursing babies as slaves to your enemies. That's why you must bring them into the tabernacle to cry this cry. Spare your people, O oh Lord. Give not your heritage to put that the nations should rule over them. Why should they say among the people, Where is your God? So even our children, we don't leave them behind. There's a time that God will call for a solemn assembly. Amen. Have you noticed that when God is against a particular person, he kill him and his children and his children, he doesn't want anything that represents. So if God wants to bless, he wants to bless. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. Amen. Amen. Okay, so it is not feasible for you to bring your children because, because when you go back home, do you minister to them? Have you taught them to pray? Have you allowed them to pray? This brother over there, when I sent that voice note, he traveled and came. Crossover, he traveled with all his family. He came to Joss. He slept in my house. The night before the night of crossover, he sent me a message that they, he wants to see me. They do it every year since I've known him. He will come in with the children. They all nailed down. 
Every one of them has an envelope in their hand. The one that knows what she's doing and the one that does not know what she's doing. Do you know why you are stingy even to God? You never saw your parents give. Tell me how my children will be stingy. When I have practically even taken food out of their mouth and given to other people. Who is with me today? I didn't call for this assembly. God did. No more diabetics for you. No more sugar Christianity. And you see, this is the one you should say amen. No way. As you walk out, you are blessed. See? See? I am not called to give you diabetes. It's about time you are responsible to God as he's responsible to you. It's about time. Imagine if you spread the work. There are people in church, every time something financial is happening in their lives, they know who to go to after service. They know the people to go to. And give their card to, I'm getting married. There are people under the sound of my voice. There's no marriage that has taken place in this latter house that their seed did not enter inside. I want to ask you, even by the laws of nature, can their children marry Jagala Jagala people? Okay. It's not possible. It's not possible. It will never be said within our time, where is your God? In the name of Jesus. The final scripture I will read, let me stop here. So I don't... Overfeed you, you start to vomit. There are so many other scriptures just dealing on fasting as a weapon. Amen. This is the one I really, really love. Mark chapter 9, verse 28 to 29. Mark 9, 28 to 29. Amen. When he heard, when he had come into the house, that means. He came out from public gathering. His disciple asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? There was one demon that they met in their ministry journey, Pastor Michael. That demon did not respect them because they are disciples. <laughs> there is a time that you say, the God of my father, Enenche, the demons will not hear you. Amen. Oh. There is a time when the scripture that says only they that know their God will be strong and do exploit will make, will be the one that will work for you. I'm telling you. You see this mama here? This mama. Mama Luri. Mama... The second daughter reminds me of your name. Winnie. There was a time she used to dress those girls, bath them, wear them clothes. I used to do the same for this one. Bath her, wear her clothes. You have a child. After breastfeeding the child, you teach the child to sit. You carry cotton in our day of mothers. You carry cotton. You put pillow pillow inside the cotton. See, Pastor Comfort is laughing. You remember now, we put pillow pillow like this. They will sit inside. As they are sitting, they will find the place where they are tilting to us. We'll do like this. We'll put, if you leave them like this, that's how they will be and can die like that. They can't stretch their hand and help themselves. So you help them to learn how to sit. As they are learning how to sit, they start falling on their stomach. Amen. Then they start raising their bum bum like this and push it down and raise it and push it down. They are trying to crawl. The mother is excited. You are watching. Until this child starts to now stand up. The mother becomes the clown of the whole house. You are just anything the child wants at that moment. You will stand up. Which mother amongst us here did not dance with your child? To teach her how to stand. Eh, Auntie Selina, as you did for um, uh, Cynthia, as you did for your daughters, that's how your mother did for you. You see her sitting down here. She will not go and do ata 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 for your children now. True or false? If she goes, the only job she wants to do is to spoil those children. Rose have changed. She's still a mother, but a grand one. So all she brings in the life of the children is grandeur. You are the one that will bring discipline. Amen. 
These children that you now taught how to sit, stand up, rise up and do. Tomorrow, you will see them teaching another how to stand up. At that moment, they are responsible for their own lives. They are responsible for their own decisions. They are responsible for their own altars. You are not. Glory be to God. But, the seed that you have put in them, regardless, the prodigal son had to come back because he had a father who knew what he put inside him. That's why he kept standing by the door of Bamshak. Yes, Senny, I didn't raise a bastard. I did not raise one that will sit down with pigs. I have spoken when he was a child. I will not speak now. The words I've spoken yesterday, they will resonate in his heart. And he got up one day, the Bible said, and he came to himself. And he said, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? This woman's child was giving testimony. <laughs> you know, there's something that's happening to our boys these days. There's a string. Somebody is put, put, putting somewhere and dragging them to one height. I don't know where they are going. They are just stalling. Because when they came out to give the testimony, I said, ah. To my memory, you pass one boy. Who is this one? Then I look very well. I said, hey. He is taller than her. He turned, he looked at her. See his report in his heart. See his testimony in his mouth. And he said, this woman. Do you know that the first love of every man is his mother? He said, this woman. I won't be here without this woman. Amen. But you know what, sis? Something is going to happen when he meets a babe. They don't used to think twice before they ditch you. Allah, you are just ditched in a second. Ditched. You call him, he will not pick. Every time you call, his number is busy. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Every time you call, number busy. Every time you call, number busy. Excuse me, are you talking to God? Because he doesn't use phone. Who are you talking to? They will just ditch you. But the rest stayed assured that this same young boy... You put something inside him. He will go to the nations of the earth. The only thing Satan can do is dance around him. No woman under the sound of my voice has a child that belongs to Satan. Okay, this amen, I don't know whether you know what you are saying. Do you know the demons at the gate of schools? Do you know the demons in the name of matrons? Do you know the demons, witches and wizards in the name of teachers? I said there is no mother under the sound of my voice that has a child that belongs to Satan. child that laid in your womb is a priest unto the most high God. Amen. Say an amen that will resonate to God in heaven. Amen. Every child that sucked your breast, you are the You know that child you nurse that child you prayed over that child there's a time the child had fever you prayed there's a time the child had whatever you prayed and every prayer that you have ever pronounced over that child just say the Lord is gathered as a sister before the father hallelujah to the Lamb of God let every mother here be encouraged let every father here be encouraged. Every war that Satan is fighting against your children is, is an anger against you. But stand in the posture of a woman in birth. Today as you go home, you will anoint your doors. You will anoint your windows. You will anoint your womb. You will anoint yourself. You will cry unto God. You will use this fasting in your mouth and you will wage war. Inside the lungu, privately, they say, why couldn't we cast it out? Then Jesus gave him the answer in verse 29. He said to them, this kind can come out by nothing. Except by what? Prayer and fasting. Mothers, do you know that you are licensed to send prayers ahead of time? Let the prayer go and wait for your child when your child enters 30. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
you will send the prayer. You came with your oil, lift it up. I want to pray. I hand over to your pastor. You came with your oil. This is a weapon. Oil is a weapon. Amen. 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 Oil is a weapon. You will anoint your own body. <laughs> Let me say it as I hear it. You get back to your child through cesarean section. You will put it on the place that they cut open. That is the gateway through which your child came into the world. That's for mothers praying for their children. You gave birth natural birth. You put it on your vagina where you opened and gave birth to that child. You put that oil there. This was the gateway into which you used to come into this earth. And because I'm the custodian of this gateway, the day you die, that gate is closed. Because the gateway, you are the custodian, you are the carrier of that gateway. No gate of hell can open against your own child. Hey, fathers will say, mommy, where will they? You too, you, you will anoint your own weapon that you used to impregnate the woman. It was your semen. It, do you think witches are playing? Do you think wizards are playing? When they will tell a full grown man, naked yourself and go to the road and be dancing, you go and do it. God is saying, anoint your private part. You say, which realm are we entering now? That's why I said there are some teachings on prayer. I will only teach the prayer back. I will sit them down and open it for them in scripture. Let them see it. There are gateways. Glory be to God. This is prayer for your children. I'm giving you expo. No, none that came out of this gateway will be lost. Ah, who pushed you out? Who pushed you out? Me. The same way I pushed you into the earth, I pushed you into the kingdom of God. Ah, you don't have to know big English to make intercession. The way I pushed you into the world, this is the same way I'm pushing you into the kingdom. By enemies! You will enter the kingdom. You will hear the voice of God. You are not a child of perdition. You will not bring disgrace to the kingdom because the kingdom is bigger than my name. You are under fasting and you sleep and read magazine. You are not fasting. You are starving. Because any weapon that you don't know how to use will lie down there. You will die not knowing that you have a weapon. The fact that natural food has not entered your mouth Every spiritual food you have taken is gaining weight. Lift up, lift up that, cup, that oil. Hallelujah. 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 Dear brothers, you are the higher. Give me Isaiah. 55 verse 5 to 7 we're going to use that to pray Isaiah 55 verse 5 to 7 when I say it's time to pray and you read the scripture you find your own position we are taking the offense we are taking the offensive we are not taking the defensive amen I said amen behold thou shalt call uh -huh, thank you Isaiah 55 verse 7 surely you shall call a nation you do not know, and the nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Amen. Give me verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Amen. As you lift up this oil to the God of heaven, this scripture and every promise within it, the promise of the forgiveness of your sin and the promise of your expansion to nations shall come to pass in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I said in the name of Jesus Christ. I said in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said in the book of James, we don't have to open it. It says, is there any sick? Let him call on the elders of the land. Let them anoint the sick with oil and the prayer of faith shall do what? It shall heal the sick. Lift up this oil. As you put it at the doorpost of your house, this year, no doctor will see your money. Amen. 
Rabada Santuria libera haya bakusu turia li debrodusia de bahaya. E bagadusia de bahande libridusia de bahaya. By the anointing, yokes are broken. And as this oil touch everything you put it on, let the anointing of God, the Spirit of the Most High God, the power of Jehovah Elohim, let it rest upon whatever you anoint. And let the power of God become your defense. From this day henceforth, in your household, in your place of work, in your business, on the chair you sit on the bed you lie down in your kitchen i release the power of god to go wherever this oil shall touch and bring your desired prayer to pass in the name of jesus as the oil that you are holding Touches the ground of your house. Touches the doorpost of your office. We bring to judgment. Every contrary voice. That has spoken against your life. As the oil touches your body. Your body becomes a, the temple of the most high God. You become a property of God. And by that confession. I curse every sickness and disease. I curse every ailment. All levels of spirits of infirmity. All the cadres, all the ranks and files of the authorities of Satan. I release the word of the Lord that brings us victory by the oil. That shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. Someone shout, I have. I said, shout, I have. Victory in every aspect of my life by the power of the anointing. Begin, begin to speak in tongues now. Too much prayer there's never too much prayer ministering spirits are assigned to minister to you and your household as this oil touches your doorpost and your body your cars your kitchen when you enter your car to travel angels are in the car with you angels are in front of you angels are around you angels are behind you Amen. wherever the sole of your feet when you go home you anoint your feet again with oil Amen. there are certain places you want to enter this year anoint them with oil Amen. anoint your feet with oil Amen. and say to your feet you will enter these places not next year send your angels Charles and Francis Hunter wrote a book angels on assignment Send them, they are ministering spirits to go and work for you. Before you enter your office, eager eat. We are going to do a special communion in this series where you will take the blood. Amen? You will take the blood home with you. Hallelujah. 
There are evil men in your angwa. Come out at night. Stand in front of your street. Pour the blood. And send them packing. I had a testimony from the mouth of Bill Winston. A woman was living in California, I think, and her whole street was taken over by gangsters. They can't go out, they can't come in. Gang boys will come out, enter anybody's shop, rob it, take what they want to take. Then God sent Bill Winston there to start church. And he went, and they were having the first meeting. And they held their hands in a circle. And when you hold your hands in a circle, you are sending a sign into the realm of the spirit. It's a symbol of unity. That's why witches and wizards do it. When, when you say, they say the round table, something, something, night of the round table. It's, it's, it's an occultic thing. Amen? And I'm trusting God that <laughs> God will allow me to begin to talk to you to identify occultic things in your house that you bought with your own hand and brought to your house. That you don't know these ones are gateways to demonic activity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So she met them. They were in a circle praying. He said, who is the pastor? Interrupted the prayer. He said, I'm the one. He said, gang rob arm robbers and whatever have taken over my, our street. We can't come out. We can't go in. He said, welcome into the center where we are praying. So she stood in the center. When they finished praying, he said, go. He said, take as he said he was praying there to ask God, what will he tell this woman? And the Lord told him, he said, give her this oil. Let her go and anoint this, this street. So she took the oil from his hand and went out. The woman didn't wait till the next day. She went to the street, poured the oil. The following day, the armed robbers came out. By 12 noon, they all packed their bags. Nobody told them. They started moving out of the city. To look for new locations. I, this one, I didn't read it in the Bible. Before you say, somebody wrote stories that we can't confirm. Amen. Amen. That's your office that they don't like you. You are not seeking for anybody to like you. You own that office, they just don't know. You will pour that oil and choose who is remaining before this year will end and who is going. You didn't hear what I said. Did I not tell you that these are about the weapons of our warfare? They decided to be your enemy. So let's go. You want a piece of me? I am not giving you a piece of me, but I'm taking the whole of me. You are the one talking about me all around in this office. By my authority as a child of God, sitting with Christ in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers, I terminate your appointment in this office. Pour it and walk away. The appointment will be terminated one of, other, one of either way. The person will just get up and go, or the organization will sack that person. A troublesome neighbor in your compound before you build your own. Anoint their door, send them packing. Just because I happen to be living in the same house with you, don't mean that me and you are age mates. Don't, don't think that we are both tenants. If a woman can go to a babala and boil two eggs and add palm oil and trust it to put on the street, why can't you trust the one that Jehovah God has put his hand there? You will anoint your house. There is a car that has talked with you and told you that I'm not leaving you. You will anoint that car and tell it to go. The mattress you are sleeping on is the one Father Abraham used. You will go and anoint that mattress and say, be going. I don't want you in my life again. Let money come into my hand. Let me buy a new one. Orthopedic one that when I lie down to massage my body, but can I hear an amen with somebody? This one will not give you diabetes, it will only give you good sleep. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Put that 
thing in your hand and put it in your pocket. It will never run dry. Yeah. I will learn to nations I will not borrow. Somebody shout hallelujah. The oil is not up. The oil is, should still be up. Lord, every pronouncement made, prove yourself, Holy Ghost, in the life of your sons and your daughters. Prove yourself in the life of your sons and your daughters. In any way, shape, or form, according to this scripture in Isaiah, that we, by offense, have invited demons and given them access to our lives. We say we are sorry. In deep repentance, we repent to God. In any way, we have opened the door for Satan to come in. By mercy tonight, we ask that the doors be closed. Lord, go into our history, known and unknown sins. We bring repentance. So that your voice that will come out of this oil will speak for us. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, Concerning the latter house Christian center, my father, you have told us we are the latter house. As they anoint themselves, anything that robs men of glory, anything that takes away glory from men, remove it from their bodies in the name of Jesus. Anything that brings glory, anything that man can interpret as glory let it rest upon their lives in the name of jesus i call you blessed thus said the lord you are not forsaken you will never be forsaken he has loved you with an eternal love and he will never change his mind about you if you have an offering lift it up before god